welcome to today's lecture i am back with a new topic cleaning and sanitation of dairy plant we have already discussed on several topics on processing of liquid milk or different kind of milk products we have discussed different aspects of dairy plant before that now it is very important for the maintenance of the dairy plant the hygienic aspect in which the routine cleaning and sanitation after every day operation is extremely important so in this topic we will discuss about understanding the different aspects of cleaning what is cleaning and sanitation about the desirable properties of detergents or what is sanitation different kind of sanitizers and then we will understand the process of cleaning methods of cleaning the sequence of operations and sanitation and then we will understand different um, manual or mechanical cleaning and finally about the modern cleaning process like cip so all this thing we are going to discuss step by step now so this particular lecture is more suitable for undergraduate students of dairy science dairy technology veterinary science on lpt unit 1 and also it will be useful for postgraduate students so few basic things we need to understand here that is about the definitions the first thing is cleaning cleaning is the process of removing food and other types of soil from any surface so in the dairy plant or even in a food plant there are different equipments machineries tables or other working places or floors so all the floors will adhere to different kind of food materials and other soils all these things should be removed sanitization is the process of reducing microbiological contamination to a level that is acceptable to local health regulation so basically sanitization is to kill the microorganism after the cleaning so cleaning and sanitization goes one after the other then sterilization this is a process of destroying all microorganisms so that includes both pathogenic and non pathogenic killing all the microorganism that's called sterilization and next one is the detergent that is a agent used for cleaning so a cleaning agent that removes food soil stains minerals or other deposits which helps the cleaning easy or which reduces the energy requirement for cleaning that is the detergent we'll see little more details next so there is a terminology called disinfectant so it is an agent that is applied to inanimate objects it does not necessarily kill all organisms so it will not make sterilization this is more commonly used in clinical practice or any other microbiological aspect or laboratory to make any material free from microorganisms but that's not suitable for any surface which is going to come in contact with any food material germicide is an agent that destroys microorganisms sometime bactericide an agent that causes the death of specific group of bacteria then bacteriostat an agent that prevents the growth of specific group of microorganisms but does not necessarily kill them it will only stop their growth so that is called bacteriostat or bacteriostatic then sanitizer this is an agent that reduces the microbiological contamination to a levels conforming to local health regulations so sanitizers are the agents which kills the microorganism and these are suitable to be used for food related materials or surface or machineries etc now there is a general guideline pertaining to maintenance of hygienic condition in dairy plant or for maintaining proper uh, cleaning and sanitation inside the dairy plant we need to understand some of the basic requirement around the plant or surrounding the dairy plant the premises of the dairy plant shall be kept clean and shall be free from strong or foul odors smoke or air pollution because surrounding has a very important role so if the surrounding is dirty it will bring all the unhygienic contamination or it the odors will be absorbed with the milk or smoke and air pollution will create a problem 
then construction of driveways and planned traffic areas shall be of cement or asphalt material to keep dust and mud to a minimum a suitable drainage system shall be provided for rapid drainage of all water from the plant otherwise there will be water stagnation nearby and that will cause the problem of other different kind of insects breeding etc surface water around the plant and premises shall be disposed of to prevent environmental or health hazard so there should not be any water around the plant that should go away quickly for better environment and health the surrounding shall be free from rubbish bushes and waste materials to prevent rodents insects and other vermin so this will invite all kind of rodents and that will come inside the plant and cause different kind of hazard so this is a general requirement for around the dairy plant for better hygienic condition inside the dairy plant so before we go further about the cleaning here is a general understanding about the economics of hygiene in dairy plant you can see from this pie chart the labor and supervision that takes the maximum cost about 65 percent and then comes the water or heating water cleaning equipment and chemicals they are the eight percent eight percent and seven percent in other words the cleaning and Sanitation is a costly affair, even sometimes it is said that it costs less to be clean than to be dirty. So here I would like to say that routine and regular maintaining the cleanliness and sanitary condition is more paid than if we neglect it and in the long run there can be serious loss of the quality and that can cost very heavily to the dairy plant. So it is always cost less to be clean than to be dirty. Now let us understand the desirable properties of detergent. I have already explained that detergents are the chemicals which are used to make the cleaning easy or to reduce the requirement of energy. The properties like wetting and penetrating power which helps in removing the darts, emulsifying power especially when the darts are of fatty materials or lipids saponifying power again it is suitable to remove the lipid materials through saponification deflocculating power so this helps in removing the darts bringing to the surface which is adhering there then sequestrating and chelating power so this sometime they bind with some of the soil materials and make it easy to remove them so next few more properties I will come uh, in continuation of desirable properties of detergent they should be quick and complete solubility that is the detergent should be easily soluble in water should be non corrosive that is whatever material we are going to clean particularly the surface of different equipments machinery stables so these chemicals should not have any adverse impact or corrosive effect economical that should be cheap for regular use stability during storage so it should not degrade so the quality will go should be mild on hands so it should not have any effect on the hands because many times the cleaning is done manually by hand and should possess germicidal action though there will be a separate chemicals for sanitization but some of these detergents should have little bit of germicidal activity Now classification of detergents, they are broadly classified into four categories. First one is alkalis like sodium hydroxide, sodium bicarbonate, sodium phosphates or sodium silicate or sulphides. Second category is acids like mild phosphoric acid or tartaric or citric or gluconic acid. Mild acids can be used for milk stone removal but sometime if we need strong acid that is nitric acid is used. Then the third category is phosphates and chelating materials. These are used together with acids and alkalis. Examples are like tetraphosphate, hexametaphosphate, tripolyphosphate or pyrophosphate. So they are used as a additional compound along with the acids or alkalis. And fourth category is surface active agents or wetting agents. They help the 
detergent to mix with the soil better. So these are used either alone or in conjunction with acids or alkalis. The examples are like T-Pol which is very common, Acinol N or Idate 10 and sometimes common soaps. So these are the different category or class of detergents. So this is little more again about sanitization. So cleaning and sanitization is a complementary process. First there should be proper cleaning and then only there is sanitization possible. So sanitization is the process of killing the pathogenic organisms 100% and most of the non-pathogenic or microorganisms. So basically they are antimicrobial or uh, agents of chemical and physical nature. The sanitizers are substances capable of destroying all pathogenic and almost all non-pathogenic microorganisms. So first the cleaning should be proper otherwise the effect of the sanitizing agent will not be proper. So cleaning and sanitization are related to each other. But sanitization is not really sterilization. Sterilization means killing every microorganism whereas sanitization is mainly to kill the pathogen and much of the other non-pathogenic organisms. Now we will see some of the desirable properties of sanitizers. Firstly, they should be non-toxic. Otherwise, they are used on the machineries and surfaces which will come in contact with the food material or milk or milk products. Therefore, they should be non-toxic. Secondly, quick acting because the application of these agents will be very fast. So they should have a quick action on the microbes or pathogens. Relatively non-corrosive to hands and equipment because sometimes it will cause damage to the equipment or to our hands. Easily and quickly applied. So they should be easy to apply and very quick, relatively inexpensive, inexpensive because the cost of their application should be affordable. Otherwise, the cost of production of milk products will be more. So these are some of the properties briefly about the sanitizers. So little more about the sanitizers and sanitization process. The commonly used dairy sanitizers are steam, hot water and chemicals like chlorine compounds or iodine compound or iodophore and sometimes quaternary ammonium compound. So some they are either physical in nature or chemical in nature and the method of chemical sanitization broadly consists of flushing that is the liquid we can flush on the surface or spraying we can spray the liquid or the steam or the chemical solution sometimes brushing or sometimes fogging or sometimes submersion. So we can dip small small equipments, we can dip into the solution, chemical solution or chlorine solution like that. So briefly this is about the different kind of sanitizers and their application for the process of sanitization. Here briefly we will see the mode of action of different kind of sanitizers. sanitizers are to kill the microorganism especially the pathogen. So first category like chlorine compounds they are called chemical sanitizers chlorine compounds or chlorine gas which are available like chloramine T or hypochlorite. So basically chlorine react with water and forms hypochlorous acid and this hypochlorous acid is highly bactericidal and it kills all the microbes. So nascent hydrogen ion destroys microbes by inhibiting enzymic reactions and glucose oxidation. Then iodophores that is a iodine compound acts through halogenation and oxidation of sulfhydryl groups. Dissociation of iodine from the surfactant is responsible for bactericidal action. And the third category quaternary ammonium compounds like acetyl, trimethyl, ammonium, bromide. So they act on cell membrane causes disintegration and denaturation of proteins essential for growth and metabolism. They also inactivate special enzyme system essential for respiration of cells. So these are the actions on the bacterial cell, the ammonium compounds or quaternary ammonium compounds. Now let us understand about the principles of cleaning and sanitation. 
cleaning or washing of dairy equipment implies the removal of soil from the surface of each machine or other surface of the working surface or tables and equipments selection of detergent depends on type of soil quality of water supply materials of surface and the equipment to be cleaned and method of cleaning that is soaking brushing spraying or recirculation so the principle here is the kind of detergent to be selected based on the type of soil if it is lipid material the detergent should be different if it is proteinaceous the detergent should be different and the quality of water and the surface to be cleaned heat is most reliable sanitizer especially when both temperature and time are controlled so for sanitation heat is the most suitable otherwise we can go for chemical of course thus effective sanitization can be done by steam with a 15 pound pressure for 5 minutes or zero pressure with 15 minutes or with hot water having 20 to 95 degree celsius temperature for 10 minutes so this is the basic principle for cleaning and sanitation or for their success now we will discuss about the cleaning sequence so we are discussing about the cleaning in dairy plant especially machineries and equipments and other surfaces so in case of different equipments or containers this is more suitable to discuss here that is first is drainage that is to remove any residual loose milk and any other matter so whatever residual milk is there first should be should be drained out second is pre rinsing that is with cold or hot water or ordinary water to remove as much milk residue and other matters as possible that is first rinsing and then warm or hot detergent washing so this is the actual washing where the detergent solution is used with about 0.15 to 0.6% alkalinity that is the alkali detergent to remove the remaining milk solids so this is the detergent which helps to remove the soil which is strongly attaching with the container so this is very important for removing the dots now the in continuation about the cleaning sequence so previously we have used warm water with detergent now hot water rinsing so this will help to remove the detergents already detergent is used for removing the soil now the hot water is used to remove all the dirts and detergents then next is the sanitization this is to destroy all the pathogenic and almost all the non pathogenic microorganisms so either we can use steam or hot water or chemicals as we have discussed earlier and then the final step is drainage and drying so here all the leftover water should be removed and the container particularly in case of container it should be fully dried so to prevent bacterial growth and corrosion drying readily accomplished by heat and ventilation so unless it is fully dried some water will remain some microbes will remain and that will grow so this drainage and drying is very important for the success of sanitation now methods of cleaning dairy equipment or dairy plant there are three here first is hand or manual washing so in case of small dairy plant most of the things can be washed manually or with hand and then there is mechanical washing where lot of mechanical support is used particularly in bigger dairy plant and it helps in washing many things directly by a program do in case of can washing etc and the one of the modern application in washing dairy plant is the cleaning in place or cip method which we will discuss in more detail so all the three methods we are going to discuss next and more details about the cleaning in place which is a very common practice for washing different equipments and machineries in modern dairy plant now we will discuss about the manual or hand washing first we should prepare a solution of alkaline detergent with about 0.8 to 1% detergent mixture in tap water so as to give a minimum alkalinity of 0.5% in wash tank and maintain the temperature at about 50 degree celsius 
thoroughly rinse the utensils with clean cold water first that is the first step and then introduce the detergent solution into the equipment thoroughly brush the equipment surface then inside and outside with a brush so this is the first part for manual washing or hand washing of any equipment or any can or any other utensils then in continuation to the manual or hand washing wash the utensils with enough fresh cold water using a clean brush again if needed to remove all traces of detergent so first there is a cleaning with the detergent solution and then one more washing if required allow the equipment to drain thoroughly and let it dry for at least one or two hours so after the second uh, rinsing it should be again drained and dried and then we should go for sanitization so sanitize the equipment surface by steam or hot water after cleaning and or by rinsing with chlorine solution so either we can use hot water for sanitization or we can use the chlorine solution which should have at least 200 ppm of available chlorine just before using so this is briefly about the manual washing first there is a plain rinsing with water then wash with detergent solution then if required one more time with brush and detergent solution we can do and finally we should rinse and remove everything with the clean water after that you should dry it and then we should sanitize now we will discuss about mechanical washing so this is more with the help of mechanized system first we will discuss about the washing of cans mechanical can washer so first step is drainage stage for liquid milk residue whatever residual milk is there that should be drained then pump pre-rinsing with normal water normal water is pumped and then it should be drained again for every step then pump fed jetting with detergent at not less than 70 degrees celsius so this is hot water with detergent this is for actual cleaning and removing the dirt then rinsing by steam and water ejector at not less than 80 degree 88 degrees celsius so this is one more time with hot water for final washing then there is a final fresh water rinsing with steam and water ejector at 88 to 93 degrees celsius so this is a plain hot water without detergent this will remove all the detergents already used for cleaning then live steam injection that is for sanitization to kill all the microbes and finally drying so hot air drying is done by using the temperature of 95 to 115 degree celsius so this is briefly about the mechanical washing of cans now we will discuss about the mechanical bottle washing so earlier days bottles were used for packing of liquid milk and nowadays again it is coming so it is better to understand about the washing a bottle in a mechanized way first step is pre-rinsing using normal water at 30 to 38 degree celsius next is detergent wash about one to three percent caustic soda with chelating and wetting agents preferably in two stages at 60 to 75 degree celsius so two stage detergent solution is used for actual cleaning and removing the soil then it is a plain warm water rinse to remove all traces of detergents and temperature can be at a lower side around 25 to 45 degrees celsius and usually recirculated that is second time for further thorough rinsing of the bottle then next is cold water rinse with chlorinated water this is for sanitization this is for killing all the pathogens and other organisms this chlorinated water should have 35 to 50 ppm of available chlorine and then finally there is draining after the bottles come out of the machine and drying so this is the process for mechanized bottle washing now we will discuss about cleaning in place or cip this is the modern practice in all dairy plant for cleaning all equipments and machineries in its own place without dismantling so this refers to the system of cleaning and sanitization which does not require the daily dismantling of dairy equipment so first step is pre-rinse with cold water till discharge water runs clear so we must 
Rinse it at least once or twice for removing all the dirt or remnants. Then it is rinsed with acid detergent. Acid rinse with phosphoric acid solution of 0.15 to 0.6% acidity. Recirculated at 65 to 71 degrees Celsius for 20 to 30 minutes. So first time normal detergent and second time warm detergent. And this may have wetting agent which helps in better cleaning. And after this step, this draining out of the acid solution, then we will see the next step. So once again about the cleaning in place, after the acid detergent solution is removed, it is rinsed with hot water. Hot water rinse with 65 to 71 degrees Celsius for 5 to 7 minutes and then this rinse water should be drained out. Then the next washing is with alkali detergent. So alkali rinse with alkali detergent solution of 0.15 to 0.6 percent alkalinity and then second time it is recirculated with hot water that is 65 to 71 degrees Celsius for 20 to 30 minutes. Here again wetting agent may be added for better cleaning ability. After this alkali wash or alkali detergent washing the drain out all the alkali solution and then final hot water rinse with normal warm hot water 71 to 82 degrees celsius till the whole system has been heated and rinse water should be drained out so after this final sanitation should be done so this is the process for cleaning in place which is done automatically programmed from one center of cleaning station where from the pipes and hose comes and being attached to the different equipments and one by one different solution comes and rinsing and cleaning takes place. So here it is diagrammatically explained about the cleaning in place. Normal water comes for pre-rinsing and it goes out. Then the alkali solution, uh, first here it is used as alkali detergent and then this wash water is recirculated for second time and then it goes out. Then there is normal water for rinsing and that water goes out and drained. Then there is acidic detergent and it is second time recirculated with hot water and then it is going out and then there is a final rinsing with normal water and after that there will be sanitation either with steam or chlorine water. Now here actually this CIP system can be both manual and automatic. So there is a manual control where the every step we can start and stop. So how much time every step will be used like first rinsing or alkali rinsing or acid rinsing, how much time and, and how much concentration everything manually control. Then there is a automation and at different level there can be low level, medium level and high level. So high level automation means here they are everything will be automatic. The how much concentration of different uh, detergent it will be programmed and automatically it will work and for how much time each solution will be used that is also can be programmed. So in the right side you can see a, a diagram which shows different parts of the CIP system. Now we will discuss about the merits of CIP system. So firstly it ensures that all equipment receives uniform heat treatment by eliminating the human error. So when it, it is done manually there is always possibility of different time temperature and error by the human uh, application. Secondly it reduces the possibility of contamination through human error. Again there is always possibility of human error and causing contamination after the cleaning and sanitation. Then next is saving of total cleanup costs and in man hours. So here we can reduce the cost of cleaning and also the manpower required and thereby total cost of cleaning is reduced. Improved plant utilization and appearance because of the a more mechanized system so overall utilization of plant is better appearance better and the no machines need to be dismantled bring and clean and again resetting so all these things are highly convenient less damage to the equipment because we are not regularly opening and fitting so it will have the minimum damage to the equipment and it is also time saving because everything is done step by step in the place itself so total time required for cleaning and making the equipment ready is very less. 
Now we will see the success factors of CIP system. This is a very common system in modern dairy plants. So proper selection of pipes and fittings, installation and development of circuits. So this is very, very important for the success. Proper temperature of cleaning solution, adequate velocity of cleaning solution. So temperature of solution and velocity is important for the success. Use of detergents designed specifically for recirculation cleaning. So as I mentioned earlier, the acid solution or the alkali solution is second time used with a warm water that saves the requirement of detergent actually and proper concentration of detergent solution. So detergent is a costly chemical. So we must use the proper requirement of the concentration so that it is not overused and we can save the cost also. <coughs> and sufficient cleaning time should be given. So for every equipment, for every particular type of dirt, a optimum time is required. So these are the factors for success of the CIP system. So now we are at the end of today's lecture, that is the cleaning and sanitation of dairy plant. Basically it is planned for the undergraduate students. It is equally suitable for understanding the cleaning of food plant or other food processing equipments and machineries. This particular lecture I have made it brief and short but same thing I am going to discuss in more details for postgraduate students especially for the abattoir and meat plants. So here we have discussed briefly about understanding what is cleaning, sanitization, what are the detergents, sanitizers, what are the important principles of cleaning in, in especially in dairy plant, what are the sequences and steps of cleaning and the different methods of cleaning, manual, mechanical and different steps used for mechanical cleaning in case of cans and then more details we have discussed about CIP clean in place which is commonly practiced in all dairy plant. We have discussed the process for CIP, its advantages, benefits and success factors. So hope this is very clear. So this lecture is will be very useful for all undergraduate students. Thank you.